Thank you everyone for joining us. And it's we're lucky enough to be in person and getting used to being in person again. So hopefully this is just one of many events that we're gonna be doing in person. So before I get started, and we're prim primarily gonna be hearing from the students tonight because I think you'd rather hear from them, the participants in the program than from me. Um, I do have a couple of audience questions that I wanted to ask you. And I think my uh, poll everywhere isn't working on here, but I did have it pulled up here. So if you guys wouldn't mind, I'm gonna activate this and you can pull out your cell phone and you can actually text S-N-G-U-Y-E-N-4 to that number at the top, 37607. And um, when you're able to do that, you're actually gonna be able to answer this question. So the first question of three that I have for you is, what percentage of the US population are Hispanic Latino? So we'll do that question first, give you a couple minutes to uh, answer. And by showing you the answer, hopefully you won't be influenced and you have your own thought about what the answer might be. Okay, we have some variability now. So what is it? Okay, so it, it looks like from what we have answered, and I'll leave it open for a little bit longer. Oh, now we have some, it was even before. Now we have majority of people thinking it's 27%. And I'm actually gonna get into the answer as we go through the presentation. So I'm gonna let you ponder that a little bit more, and then we will move on to the next question. So you can keep that um, app open. The next question that I have here is what percentage of the pharmacist workforce is Hispanic Latino? So previously we did US population. Now we're just talking about pharmacist workforce in the United States. Okay, looking like most people are picking that 4.6 percentage range. And again, I'm gonna go over the answer here shortly. And then the last question we have for you all is related to medical conditions that are prevalent in the Hispanic Latino patient population um, compared to the general population. Which ones are more prevalent? Okay, looking like most people hit all of the above. For this one, I will leave it, not leave it a cliffhanger. It is all the above for this answer. So as you can imagine, we're gonna go through the percentages here and the rest of the presentation, but a lot of opportunity to really, uh, with the goal and mission of our program to increase the number of Spanish speaking pharmacists to help patients in our community who have multiple of these diseases and conditions. All right. All right, so here are some of the answers to the questions that I had asked you. So when we look at our Hispanic Latino population, looking at that about 18% of the population is Hispanic Latino. As you can see, as we go down to the next bullet point here, only 4.6% of the pharmacists in this country, uh, pharmacists workforce are Hispanic Latino. So as you can see that there's a, definitely a gap. We definitely know that there are more Spanish speaking patients in our communities. That number continues to grow every so, year, every so often. And so we definitely wanna make sure we're meeting the needs of our community by having more Spanish speaking pharmacists and other healthcare professionals. In the PharmD class of 2019, about um, usually our, our class size is about 100 to 130, depending upon the year. And at that point in time, 5.7% of our students were identifying as Hispanic Latino. And the reason why I share these statistics with you is I wanted to tell you why we decided to create the CBS Health Spanish Pathway Program, right? And the thing is that we recognize that there is a huge need and we want to be able to be able to provide um, and meet the needs of our communities in Henderson, Nevada, as well as South Jordan, Utah, and preparing students who are Spanish speakers to become pharmacists. So that was really the genesis of why we created the Spanish Pathway Program. 
So for those that are not familiar, these are the pictures of our both, both of our campuses. Um, the one on the left here is the Henderson campus. And then on the right-hand side is our South Jordan, Utah campus. And so we have a college of pharmacy in both of those locations. And just wanted to spend a minute with you going over the mission statement of the College of Pharmacy, right? So we want to make sure that we're preparing our students to become competent, caring, ethical pharmacists, of course, that contribute to the profession through its commitment to scholarship and providing patient-centered care while addressing the pharmacy-related needs of our community. So that last part of our College of Pharmacy's mission statement is actually a part of our Spanish Pathway Program's mission, just because that is such an important thing that we're giving back to the community um, that we are working in. To tell you a little bit more about our Spanish Pathway Program and its timeline here, we have a great picture um, on the left-hand side there that represents when we received our first um, grant check from CBS Health. As Vanessa mentioned, we are, we are lucky enough to have the sponsorship from CBS Health. And from 2018 to 2021, they have provided over $125,000 to um, sponsor our program. So um, that started with us having two students in our inaugural group. And you can see, actually this picture doesn't show the two students. We'll see them a little bit later. We had two students who joined us in May of 2018 when we first opened the program. We then were able to expand the program to our South Jordan campus in August, 2019. And then as you can see, the first class of students graduates in May, 2020. And then this last bullet point here is actually a little bit outdated because we just had our new cohort uh, start with us. And we actually have currently 21 members in our new cohort that are part of this program. So we've grown um, exponentially, as you can see, since our inception, and we hope to continue that trend. And um, we are definitely happy to be here to share with you more about this program. So again, the mission of the CVS Health Spanish Pathway Program to increase the number of qualified pharmacy talent who speak Spanish and are willing to provide healthcare services of Hispanic communities of need. And we're going to talk about how we train our students to be able to come these pharmacists that we graduate and kind of share some of our stats um, related to the successes of our program later on this evening. We, I wanted to introduce our team and then I'm gonna really turn it over to our students who are gonna be providing the rest of the presentation. So um, Vanessa did a great job introducing myself and uh, Dr. Dave Rollins as well. So we serve as the facility uh, faculty facilitators of the Spanish Pathway Program on the Henderson campus. We also have a counterpart, um, Dr. Angela Chu. She is located on the South Jordan campus where we do have students on that campus as well. And so the three of us really work to uh, make sure that our students are staying engaged, that we're providing mentorship to the students to allow them to succeed through our PharmD program and obviously the Spanish Pathway program. And we also uh, work with CBS Health and our, their liaisons to ensure that everything is being um, done to support the program. Also wanted to introduce to you our community partner, CBS Health. So the, the nice thing about CBS Health with, in supporting us with this grant, we have had a lot of opportunity to network with them with these national leaders. So we've actually had them come to campus recently and Parker and Cece are gonna share a little bit more about that experience later on. But our main liaison from CBS Health is Dr. Lindsay Wendorf who is part of the talent acquisition team. And then we have two other folks as well that are involved on that team. Ms. Kristen Vander Luvel. Good thing she's not here and I butchered her name. And then Dr. Tony Rose, um, who also are here to support our CV's Health Spanish Pathway Program. And then obviously the most important part of our program are our students. And so just wanted to bring up this bright picture of a lot of our students over this past several years who have been in our program. They are our pride and joy. Uh, and that's why we have the successes that we do is because of the students that are involved. So it is my pleasure to turn it over to Parker Grossman, who will be presenting the middle part of this presentation. And then later on, CC will join us as well. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and attention. So, um, and again, thank you for having us and the very kind introduction. So my name is Parker Grossman. I'm a third year pharmacy student, and I'm just super grateful to be able to share our experiences with you all tonight and just sort of what we do as a program. 
Y también estoy bien agradecido de poder hablar con ustedes en el primer día del mes de herencia hispana. So, I'm super, I'm also grateful that we can speak on the first day of Hispanic Heritage Month, and that was per Google. So, there's a little Google doodle going on there. Uh, and yeah, here we are. So, we're going to initially start talking about our eligibility criteria. So, essentially, each year with the, within the College of Pharmacy, we do have a new cohort of students that can be that are going to be entering the program. And with that, a new cohort of Spanish pathway students can also emerge out of that. So that's the, that's the first thing. You have to be a student enrolled with, within the College of Pharmacy. And then from there, there really is um, a comfortability with Spanish that we, um, that's part of the eligibility criteria. And really how we gauge that is through just a student-centered interview process. So in, in my case, mine and Cecily's case, we were part of the initial COVID class, essentially. Or it was sort of a, an in-between time, but our interviews were conducted over Zoom. And so that, and that was with an, a, a student who's already a member of the Pathway program. And then th this past year, the P2, I was actually able to be a student interviewer myself. So sort of flip-flop my role there, going from the other side of the desk, and that was super rewarding. And then you can see the remainder of the eligibility criteria from there. So on to our objectives. So Dr. Nguyen mentioned just our mission statement as a program, and here we're just gonna elaborate on how we go about accomplishing these objectives. And we'll, we'll just start by talking about this image on your right here. So that's an ad campaign we ran a few years back, and it's still, it's a really nice ad campaign. It helps us just get our message out, get our, um, pretty much just, uh, just speak about who we are in terms of marketing so on, on social media platforms that's shared outside you can see on, in tabling events we've used that image a few different times and it's just super helpful for us and so we're, with that we're going to go into the individual objectives themselves now so here we are into introducing spanish and just introducing pharmacy right to bilingual students and just those with an interest in spanish and just culture in general so we've done numerous events so the the left, the first, the first, we're going to start from left to right and go across the screen there. But essentially, that was with the UNLV um, pre health class. There's a pre health club, rather. So, this was a, a club with UNLV. They're primarily Latino, Latina, and they have their pre health. And so, we as an institution the, the, with the Spanish Pathway program got to go to UNLV, go to one of their club events, and really just speak with them about pharmacy as a potential career and just the growth opportunities there are within that. And then additionally in the middle there, um, we see a high school um, cohort. So these students from Arizona came out to our campus, they got a nice tour, and we really got to just speak with them about who we are as a Spanish pathway program. So it's, it's great just being able to speak with young people who have this mutual interest in, in bridging language gaps. So we're super grateful for that. Now on the right, you can see our Instagram page. This is relatively new. And that was actually part of the team that helped spearhead this for our program. So essentially we worked alongside CVS Health and Roseman because as we are a partnership, we want both parties to be pretty much happy with the product we're putting out. So it was a lot of really nice collaboration and feel free to shoot us a follow on Instagram if you're a member of that social media platform. But we, we try our best to document the latest goings on within the organization itself. Now onto our recruitment. So this is our second objective reel here, really. So we're just gonna, we're gonna show some images on the next slides, but we're gonna just talk about how we retain our students. So a really nice thing about Roseman as an institution is just mentorship. So mentorship can evolve just in terms of um, professor to student interactions. And the nice thing within Pathway Program is we have two great outlets here and just in, in Dr. Nguyen and Dr. Rollins. And just we get to pick their brains essentially about what it's like as a healthcare professional and working alongside Hispanic patients and, and also just any, any questions. These, these are super kind individuals and they're always open to our many questions. And then within the organization itself, we also have leadership roles. So these are our chief elect and our chief positions within the program itself. So we have students pretty much, they get to um, empower themselves as leaders within the organization itself and just send out different email correspondence, really practice just how we communicate in the professional world um, these days. So just a lot of email correspondence, a lot of gathering the troops, whether it's a doodle poll um, to get availability or what have you. 
So that's a super valuable skill to have in our workplace environment, not just pharmacy, but just in general. And here we can feel free to read some of these testimonials. So these are when students were applying to um, Roseman itself and also the Spanish Pathway Program. So I can share my story a little bit there. So as I, as I mentioned, I, I was, we were sort of part of the COVID um, admissions group, essentially. But um, when I was doing my research online, I, I just went to the Roseman website. I noticed the little tab for Spanish Pathway. And being half Cuban in heritage, that's just something that resonates with me deeply. And there have been numerous times just, I'll, I'll, I'll take it back a couple of years now. So on, on some shadowing experiences, I've done some interpreting work just with patients in different clinic settings. And there just really is an ease and just like an air of comfortability that comes over a patient when you can speak in their native tongue. And just reading into the mission statement of what Pathway is, in short, it's evolved just like most things in life. The college itself evolves, the program itself evolves, but it's just super wonderful being able to play a role in that. And, it, and a lot of change um, comes about at the individual level, and ultimately that builds into the a grander level too. So that was just part of the reason when I, why I was interested in the program and still am extremely passionate about it. So on to, so here's elaborating. These are the aforementioned pictures. So this was actually on the 17th of August. We went to, so you can feel free to peruse those images. And we actually have some on our Instagram page too, just if you want to get a closer look there also. But essentially we had um, national CVS leaders. So in the top left image, you can see a couple of the national CVS leaders there. Additionally, we had two of our South Jordan students come out to the Henderson campus. So it was really great to meet them in person. So Tasia is in red at the top left and Alex with the red tie, the bottom left, he's standing next to me. We're talking to some P1 students just about pharmacy, answering their questions, seeing if they're interested in potentially Spanish pathway, seeing if Hispanic heritage is something that they wanna in incorporate into their practice one day. Um, and that was just a great opportunity, just being able to interact with the new cohort and just also interact with our um, CVS leaders. And it, later on that day, we had, it was a really nice day. We wound up going to an escape room just for some within cohort bonding. And we also went to Dr. Nguyen's house for a really lovely dinner. So that was just an example of a pretty much a full day's work in a Spanish pathway event. Additionally, we can also see, so at the top left there, that's Dr. Lindsay Wendorf. She's in the middle there. So she's, yeah, she's, we went to this Spanish, um, Spanish restaurant actually. It's called Firefly. It's a tapas restaurant. There's a few locations here in town. Really nice food if you've ever been. I'd recommend it. But we really got to pick her brain also. So that was just super great. And we also, additionally, we also had regional leaders from CVS within just the Vegas Valley. So we got to pick their brains there, eat some nice food, and just really just interact and mingle. Top right. Um, we see a Zoom call. So we, we, we've spoken about how we're transitioning steadily into the in-person setting yet again. But just for ease of communication, we still sometimes do Zoom calls with our South Jordan students. It's not always feasible for them to, to travel out here. So sometimes we'll do a Zoom. And with the recent Olympics, we actually did a, an Olympic-themed uh, virtual background. So it was just we try to keep it festive. We, we keep it fun. And we have an MC in there who always usually Dr. Christensen, Christensen Grant, who's a part of the South Jordan campus. So it's always a, just a great time being able to interact even over Zoom. And then the bottom here, so we see MER, and what does MER stand for, you may ask? So it's Movimiento Estudiantil Roseman. So that's our Spanish club, just, um, and we, we can simplify it to MER, Spanish club. All of those are sort of synonymous. And within this, um, not all, there's a lot of mutual exclusivity in between this. So there's, that's not the best way of phrasing it, but there's, you don't have to be a, a Spanish pathway member to be a member of Spanish club and vice versa. But essentially with pathway, you get um, paid membership in the Spanish club itself. And just to touch, just to share another story, I was the language director for, or lang like conversation director this past year. So we got to do a lot of nice talleres, which are just conversation events. We'd play Loteria, which is like Mexican bingo, if you've ever played that, super fun game. And another thing that we've launched um, as of last year, so. Um, there's a non-for-profit school called Life School out of Guatemala, and we were able to set up a pen pal correspondence with our students at Henderson campus and then their students over in Guatemala. So they're, uh, just for a little context, we're not going to go too heavy into detail, but they're a bilingual school out of Guatemala, and they're just, they're, they have a similar mission to us, honestly, just language gaps and just the way of the future is being polyglot, so being able to speak numerous languages 
especially Spanish language. That's I think it's one of the top three. Mandarin, I'm, I'm forgetting the the lingua francas across the world, but I know Spanish and Mandarin are are both up there. So yeah. Um, so on to a little bit, and now we're going to talk about the acknowledgments side of things. So here we can see not only are we retaining our students, but we're also having students who are excelling. So these are our ROSI awards. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, every year we have, with, as a college of pharmacy, we have these recognitions for our students. And in parentheses there, you can see the number of Spanish pathway students that have won these design, designations. And so it's just a testament to our program, a testament to all of us having this um, unified philosophy. And just, we, we, have, we have students who are excelling and we're super proud of that as an institution. Speaking of excelling, here are our graduates. This is going to be my last slide before I pass it off to Cecily. So um, as you can see, those pictures Dr. Nguyen was mentioning. So the top left, I believe, is going to be our inaugural class. So there were two students out of the 2020 graduating class. And these are all students who have, so let me see, 12 total. So we've had 12 total um, Spanish Pathway students graduate with their PharmD degrees. And that's just something we're super proud of. And that number is going to continue to rise. And um, that's pretty much it. And feel free to um, look at those pictures a little bit more while Cecily comes up. But thank you for your time. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Um, Cece or Cecily, either or. I'm just going to reintroduce myself like Vanessa did today. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and a lot of movies also show that Brooklyn is a very like melting pot of New York in general, but with that comes the fact that majority of those who do live there are Spanish speaking, um, like my family themselves. So I am Puerto Rican, which is pretty typical and your go-to race when you're um, assuming someone's race and questioning from New York. It's pretty interesting. Um, but I'm just going to go through some more information. Um, being that, like I said, I'm from Brooklyn, it's a melting pot. You would expect someone you can communicate with regardless to the language. A lot of times that people don't realize is as you realize like when you go to the store and the person you're speaking with that you speak English they're speaking English because that's what's expected almost but then you don't realize that if like my grandmother went to that store and they don't really understand all of the English words or something that you're saying in English is probably a little bit too challenging because it's not clicking because it's not their native tongue things of that nature we just wanted to like put the eye out on so my family was heavy on like understand both at least even if you don't speak it, get it. So um, that was heavy for me in my upbringing. Um, I was never the confident one to speak. <laughs> I was just like, I know what they're saying. <laughs> uh, and that's about how far as it went there. But um, I realized later down the line, I was like learning that my grandmother had trouble speaking for things that are important. So you realize like health taxes and things that are required for you as a citizen and for your health I mean that's required for you period almost so I think that part a lot of people almost ignore is pretty important and how to communicate that was super eye-opening for me because I didn't even know how to explain it to my grandmother in some cases I'd be like mom I need your help <laughs> like explain this real quick and then I had to wait for mom to get off work or so later down the line you realize like oh snap there's other people like my grandmother or like her grandmother grandfather aunts and uncles and so on and it relates to anybody who moves here so i think that's one thing that was important to me and why i chose to even pursue spanish pathways because i don't know who i can impact because any impact is a good one so um just to talk about the community we serve it is our hispanic community and anyone spanish speaking um, we want to just make sure that we bridge that gap and we're able to give them someone to relate to or someone to rely on. So um, with that, as we are the uh, recipients of the program, we as members have access to something called Canopy, which is an online program, sort of like a tutoring system where if you don't know, you will learn. Um, if you are not um, confident in certain terms and things to acknowledge when speaking with patients and communities that you are, have all the access to to do it. 
Um, what I liked about Canopy myself, because we do have assignments to do throughout the year, was they have a part where you actually can hear it instead of just reading it. So you literally press play, and it gives you a snippet of what it's supposed to sound like, and then you go on and um, either quizzes or uh, there's some practicals of like uh, select all the by and placing it into the correct order to make sure you get the grammar correct and things of that nature that are more practical was pretty awesome to actually learn how to put the sentences together correctly to be able to like portray medical or medicinal Spanish as well as uh, conversational for like cultural boundaries. So I think that's a big part of it because I may know like textbook Spanish or I may know my family's dialect and stuff, but just to communicate effectively across any culture and any barrier, I think is super important. So that's why we like Canopy. Um, and then we also have our rotation hours. So our first and second year, throughout the years, we have different uh, times that we attend our rotation sites to actually like, I guess, engulf yourself into the actual environment that you have to end up being in a career with and then getting the exposure you need. Um, a lot of times that is where I related the most to how like my grandmother felt. So I felt like I was talking to somebody's family member that didn't have someone to translate and something like that was like perfect for me. Um, what I've learned is one of the days that I did have a rotation day, I had a patient who had no idea like how to express what they needed because they were uncomfortable with it. And then they realized I spoke Spanish and then they were like, oh, perfect. Like just that sense of relief was way too much for me to handle. And I was like, that was it. Like, you just wanted me to understand you. Okay. Like, so it was pretty awesome because um, it was obviously like something that caused discomfort. So no matter the language is going to be uncomfortable. So now I have to translate or try to communicate at all. So it becomes like an acting game <laughs> instead of uh, actual communication. Cause it's like charades at that point. And we avoided the charades and got straight to the point. It was pretty awesome. Um, and then, like uh, Parker mentioned, we have a paid membership to MER, where we also communicate to each other using the tarea assignments that we do together and little practice things where we can also discuss um, someone else's dialect, which for me, and I speak to him all the time about it, how it makes me more comfortable, because I can speak with someone who's from the Caribbean, like I am, and those islands are pretty much um, similar dialects, or if not, they don't range that much so that we don't understand each other. But I did notice that certain words don't translate the same when we talk to people from South or Central America. And then the same for Spain. If someone is from Spain, they have a whole different dialect as well and across the water. So we don't know exactly how to communicate certain things without having someone to bridge that gap. Um, our next one that we have a pretty big deal for me, but um, I know a lot of our students participated this summer. They get a four week Spanish immersion um, internship where it's a paid internship to actually work in one of our CVS pharmacies. And then there's other events and community outreach that we work on throughout the year, which is seen here. So our first picture on the left is the vaccine clinics that we do. Uh, we usually participate to like I said, bridge that gap and create more of a confidence in our patient communication. And you can see one of our past members actually give flu shots and a flu clinic. And with the barrier that we break down immediately, they have like a sense of confidence in their own health, understanding like any adverse reactions, if there are any, most of the time it's not, but it's things to look out for if there are or any allergic reactions in case they have an allergic reaction, like that's a big deal. <laughs> like we don't wanna play around with your health and something that can negatively affect you. So we just wanna make sure that we understand what we're doing, getting the point across. And we have that practice like on a daily um, to actually have uh, people that you understand what to ask, how to ask and how to move forward if it does come to play. Uh, the second one in the middle is actually at a Cadenas market. So obviously we see markets everywhere and everyone has their own like niche of products, but we actually conducted a diabetes screening and education table there. So 
you have all of our members in those blue shirts and stuff. They were actually um, helping administer diabetes testing to see and explain to them how to move forward and how we can help them on a daily and good practices to keep if they already are aware. Um, our last picture is going to be DAT, which is our drug awareness advocacy team. Um, and they're also partnering with Parker in that picture to give a um, presentation of awareness and education to Gorman High School, which he is an alum. <laughs> um, so, and that's also on his uh, Instagram page, shout out as well. On this um, event that we had in November of the big COVID year, uh, we had a huge webinar series where we actually wanted to educate the public and not have language as a barrier. So you see two of our students, um, they actually participated with uh, Dr. Joe Greer, the Dean of College of Medicine, which is coming soon. Um, the two of them helped facilitate it because they are Spanish speaking. So they able to effectively communicate with the community to let them know of how they can stay protected and be aware of what's going on. Some more events that we do and like to do. Um, the top picture on the left is actually in partnership with Volunteers of Medicine of Southern Nevada. It's actually um, to donate household items as well as like Christmas toys to families in need. Uh, the Volunteers of Medicine, which actually Dr. Nguyen works with, actually gives to the community in ways more than just medical to the community. Um, and they usually actually help those who are uh, financially unstable mostly. And then any type of access to um, healthcare that they would need at all is predominantly what they do. And then speaking Spanish to those communities obviously has a great feedback. So we just wanted to make sure we stick on our um, events with them. And then underneath that one, it was more of a tabling um, event that we had uh, with the soccer team that we have here. So Las Vegas Knights. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, so we had a tabling sort of marketing event with them to get the word out there that we exist and we're here with them. Um, the last picture on the right was an event at our Henderson campus. And it's a community fair, which we had Similarly, a marketing event and an educational. If they have any questions, we can answer them and then we can reach out to another neighboring uh, organization if we needed to have like translation efforts and stuff, we can do that as well because it was geared towards children and their families. And we have here the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy Conference where Dr. Lindsay Wendorf on the left side accompanied our Dr. Angelo Chu in presenting the importance and impact that uh, CVS Spanish Pathways has had on the community locally, as well as the program as a whole, to understand why it's important and why we need to keep it up. And then to piggyback off of what has been said, we have an accumulation of $125,000 worth of grant money that was given to us from CVS Health which was renewed this year of $50,000. So you can see us celebrating on the left and then the regional and national leaders on the right who actually presented to us, um, including some of the members of our faculty. Here are some of the statistics of how Spanish Pathway has impacted our Hispanic and Latino community by incorporating students like myself and Parker as well as anyone who can communicate effectively Spanish speaking. So they don't have to be Latino themselves and they can make an impact just the same. So we just wanted to highlight some of the awesome things that we do and how we have impacted our history at Roseman as well as the communities around us. And again, follow us on Instagram so you can stay aware. If you guys know anyone that actually is part of any other Spanish speaking programs or have any affiliation like UNLV, CSN or any school in the States, um, just let them know as well if you'd like to 
let them know that we exist so that we can all partnership together and hope we bridge that gap that's around us every day in any country actually. <laughs> um, and then if you have any questions, we're always free to answer any of them. Thank you guys. So the question was, I can go stand up there, um, was does this this grant exist in other uh, places around the country? Is that the question within us? Oh, yeah. That's a very good question. So when we received the first grant in 2018, um, CBS Health also, it was a diversity grant. So they also funded other projects throughout the entire country, um, not CBS, uh, not the Spanish Catholic program, but other programs that other colleges of pharmacy developed. And what was nice is our program has been so successful that when we were asked to renew that we were the only program in the whole entire country that was asked to renew the grant. And with that grant renewal, initially we got $25,000 for five years. They increased, they doubled it to $50,000 and we can actually apply for that every single year going forward. So we're the only program that has was successful enough where they allowed for us to renew in that, in that way. What other questions? What do you guys plan on doing after you graduate? Um, this is Cece again. Hello. I actually am an employee of CVS and have been since 2016. Um, I, at the time, didn't even know this program existed because uh, Roseman had a thing where they actually sent predominantly Spanish-speaking students to the predominantly Spanish-speaking communities without the program existing. And I don't even know if they did that on purpose at the time. Either. Okay, because it worked. <laughs> um, and um, everybody I spoke to actually were very influencing about the reason why it's important to them to be working in a Spanish community, um, and let alone anyone that speaks Spanish or Hispanic communities. Uh, so I actually am going to continue to stay with CVS until further notice. At this point, I have like probably six years under my belt and lord knows how more how many more <laughs> oh. hello uh this is parker again for the zoom friends so i'm still undecided as of yet in terms of which path i want to initially take on my career i'm considering pursuing residency for additional training i'm considering just numerous things but i'm still very much open to working within cvs health because it's been very very gratifying and just I know Spanish speaking, I want to be a part of my career and just continuing our efforts in that way. So as of now, long story short, I'm still undecided, but I'm very open. Sure. Yeah, so 92% of Pathway graduates have been employed with CVS Health Pharmacies. And that's pretty national. That's not like restricted to uh, the Vegas area or anything like that. So wherever they want to go, if they want to transfer to another CVS or just get a job with CVS is to my knowledge, right? So the question was, what part of pharmacy life is hardest to translate directly to Spanish? I'd have to, I'd have to say some of the medical Spanish side of things. So pharmacists, um, in terms of the retail setting, don't get to express this as much, I'd say, but it definitely pops up. But when it comes to explaining certain disease states to your patients in different contexts, it can be a little challenging just from a, if you, if you were to directly translate medical terms, um, from English to Spanish, even then it may be a little confusing. So sometimes you have to come to, come to a little work around to really ex both explain the disease state in a different language and in a way that makes sense to someone who's not in healthcare. Yeah. 
So I'd say that's among the hardest, maybe not the hardest, but that's what first comes to mind. Um, for my opinion and my experience in pharmacy, I think a lot of Spanish, like terminology, medical or not, seems more suggestive. And I think that's kind of a big opportunity because you have to stress what's important, right? So you, it's really hard to say, oh, you should check your blood pressure twice a day or you should check your blood sugar twice a day. And they're like, oh, okay, but if I don't, it's no problem. And that's not really what you're trying to convey. And I think that's a big opportunity, like I said, for us, um, because you have to stress the importance of regimen. Like, no, you have to get in the habit of this so that you can understand how to fix and how to move forward with any disease state. Um, but it, like just figuring out the way to convey it, obviously you don't wanna be insultive, like do it, but it's just a matter of um, getting the point across in a respectful manner to where they also think about it all the time. Like this is healthy, this is not, like I should drink water, not soda, silly things like that in my opinion. Yeah, I would say in my experience, um, so like Vanessa mentioned, I work at Volunteers in Medicine of Southern Nevada, a free clinic that's in town here. And predominantly my patients that I see are Spanish speakers. And so I think that me um, interacting with those patients, I've had to learn enough Spanish to be able to conduct my appointments and interactions. And so one thing I've noticed is that when patients who speak Spanish encounter uh, medical professionals who don't speak Spanish, sometimes there is obviously a barrier, a barrier there. And sometimes the those health professionals sometimes are not able to educate the patient in the way that they want or are able or that they need to be educated, I guess, in that manner. And so patients miss out on that uh, opportunity to learn how to manage their chronic medical conditions, right? So I think that patients, once they realize that, hey, she Dr. Wynn can speak Spanish and I don't look like a Spanish speaker, right? They're very surprised. They're even, you know, I know that I'm not hundred percent in my Spanish ability, but they appreciate that I'm trying to make an effort and they, um, and my goal with them is to really just empower them to care for themselves, right? That's with any patient. We want to make sure, you know, after they're not going to, I'm not going to be holding their hand every day for the rest of their lives. They're only going to see me once a month or so. So I want them to be able to manage their own disease state while I'm not there with them. And that's the whole point, right? Yes. More about that. So if we look at our 33 students we've had over five years um, in our program, 12 of them have graduated and of those 12, 92% have been employed by CBS Health Pharmacies. So that was that's only one student who wasn't employed because he decided to go on the pathway of completing residency training. So after he graduated pharmacy school, he wanted to work more in a hospital clinical setting. And that's why he necessarily, he was, he was offered a job with CBS Health, but he decided to go a different route. Yes. So, um, you know, being a part of the CBS Health program, because it's sponsored by CBS Health, they really get to network with a lot of CBS Health uh, leaders, not just local, but regional and national. So when they get the opportunity to go and graduate uh, or, or in their last final year going up for graduation, they typically get offered, our students are typically offered positions within CBS if they choose to take them or not, you know, and if they choose not to take them, they could go on and work at other facilities or other pharmacies or in hospital, depending upon their interests. Yeah, it initially started in Nevada in 2018, and then we have the program also in our South Jordan campus in Utah in 2019. Yes, we have a lot. It's actually interesting. Um, Parker mentioned our ad campaign earlier, and you see a lot of people because they track who's clicking on these ads. A lot of them are from Texas, and we have a current uh, student in our program now who is from Texas, you know, and so a lot of the schools, even in Texas, the pharmacy schools, they are required. They, it's like a bilingual school. So they come to pharmacy school and they are taught in Spanish just because the number of um, uh, Spanish speakers that are there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Great questions. Anything else? All right. Thank you so much. Turn back over to Vanessa. Thank you all for what you do. That was really interesting. Um, please, you're welcome to those of you who have not eaten yet, please help yourself. Um, I think our poster is outside. 
there are lots of um, stuff to take with you, some catalogs and some flyers and things. So please make yourself at home. Don't feel like you need to rush out. And thank you again. There's also a flyer for the upcoming Neighborhood Health Series events between now and the end of the year. So again, thank you so much for coming and we'll see you next time.